Hello, this is Rohan Paul. Very welcome to my machine learning and deep learning YouTube channel. Let's get started. Hey everyone. So in the last part of this video, that is in the part one, I built a very basic neural network with PyTorch where the focus was to understand the very fundamental basic concepts of PyTorch and implementing a neural network. And in this video, I am just going to improve upon that notebook where, uh, so in this video, I'm going to include um, three things specifically adding the test and validation set. So I can calculate both training loss and accuracy and also the test loss and accuracy and adding a batch normalization and improving our model prediction accuracy and also plotting the parameter distribution across layers. And once again, in these two parts, the focus is just to understand the very basic uh, fundamental concepts of PyTorch in getting a neural network to work under PyTorch. And I'm not going to include any complex things or any deeper concepts and the data set will be the same that is FMNIST. So let's get started with the code and um, to start with I will be using the previous uh, notebook that was there in the previous video. So if you have not watched the part one of this uh, video, you definitely have to watch that because this part two is just a continuation of the previous video. And in the previous video, I uh, built this notebook uh, to prepare a basic neural network with PyTorch. And uh, so just quickly going over that, that is uh, in, in the first cell, it's all the regular imports torch and then i'm also importing numpy and torch vision to import the uh, data set of fashion mnist and um, then this is just normal code or oh, definitely uh, when if you go over the part one of this video you will see detailed explanation of all these cells so basically i'm here after importing the fashion mnist data set i am just printing a random image here this is one of the data set image and uh, then I'm just checking the shapes of this train image and size and uh, they are all 28 by 28 uh, grayscale images and there are total 60,000 uh, rows that is 60,000 images uh, in the training set. Uh, all right and now uh, the first thing so this is my uh, a quick function to random randomly plot 10 uh, 10 classes of the fashion MNIS data set and just remember that fashion MNIS data set has 10 classes of uh, clothing and the purpose the the problem is that we have to uh, do a classification of that so it's a multi-class classification problem which we are dealing with over here and uh, this was my data set generator function which will have three standard function methods inside it these init get item and the len but now that I will be in this video, I will be using the test data set as well. So my first job here is to pull that test data set because till now in this notebook, I have only pulled uh, the train data set, which has 60,000 number of images. And now I'm going to pull the test data set, which is 10,000 images. So let's uh, do that. Let's create a cell. Let's call this uh, FMNIST uh, test and I'll be using torch torch vision dot data set dot data sets fashion MNIST all I need to do is uh, just put uh, a train equal to false in this uh, code here because in the previous one I had train equal to true that will download the train data set and now if I put train equal to false it will download only the test data set my root directory remains the same and download true so that means um, uh, if i said download equal to true that means uh, if the data set is already there in here in these uh, input uh, input directory then it will not be downloaded again and this time i will do train equal to false and after downloading the images uh, let's just quickly print a random uh, image from this test set test images and oh i have to first um, let's uh, define the variable test images equal to fm fnmc dot underscore test 
data and uh, also let's uh, have uh, one variable for the targets taste targets so for this line random test images let's just choose any random one let's say five and now i'm going to print the size of this random test image dot size and also i'm going to print the image print sorry plt dot i am show random test image if i run this cell i will get these um, these image printed and uh, of course i can see as expected the size of this image is 28 by 28 all right now i have to uh, load these test images into my data transformer class that is uh, this data transformer class that I coded over here, I discussed it in detail in the previous video that this function is a standard function to load the whole training data set on a batch by batch basis. So with this class and the methods defined within it, you have uh, pretty tight control over how you want to load your data into your training model. So, uh, so I was using this load data function to do the to make use of these uh, data transformer class to load my data training data into the model on a batch by batch basis and my batch size was 32 now this load data needs to be modified to include my uh, test data as well uh, because now it's only loading the train data set and now i have these uh, test images uh, test images here and the test image targets as well so i have to load them as well so let's do that let's uh, call it test data equal to uh, data set transformer and that will take my test images and uh, test image targets as well and then i will be making use of the data loader method of pytorch and to this i will pass this test data and batch size like i said that these <coughs> these test images are only for evaluating purpose of the model of the pre-trained model so i will not be training my uh, pytorch neural network on this test data it is only uh, to be used for calculating the uh, accuracy and uh, how how good the prediction is overall so it's only for the evaluation purpose and hence i do not need to control for batch sizes i just can pass the whole test data into um into the data loader function so that so the it will be the length of the entire test images and uh, similarly for the same reason shuffle was true for the train but here for the evaluation of this data shuffle will be set to false all right and then return train loaded data and also okay i have to uh put this the result of this into a variable test uh, loaded data and then returning this as well from the function and uh, then the function for my model which is uh, in the previous video it was this the this run model function and uh, it was a very simple network of uh, one hidden layer containing 1000 neurons uh, and n dot linear and um, uh, the output is a 10 neuron layer uh, we can see the, after the first layer then i pass a relu function and then again n n dot linear and this is the output the output is a 10 neuron layer since there are 10 possible classes and for the loss uh, i was choosing cross entropy loss since the output can belong to any of the 10 classes for each image 
and now for this video i am going to change these um, uh, model function run model function to use nn dot module uh, that is i will not be using nn dot sequential i'll be using directly nn dot module nn dot sequential is actually uh, actually a uh, child of nn dot module but i will explain the difference uh, in a second let me uh, get the code running first so i'm just commenting uh, let let comment this part out uh torch.optim import sgd that remains okay here i'm taking nn dot uh, nn dot module and uh, to this i uh, with this i have to i have to have two compulsory function which is uh, the initializer that is uh, underscore underscore init function and also a forward function super dot underscore underscore init and uh, now i will be uh, doing the input to the hidden layer so self dot input to hidden layer would be and then i'm keeping the overall model architecture exactly the same that is i will have a <coughs> uh, not exactly the same but oh, i'll come to the difference so uh, overall architecture remains same that is it is first an end dot linear then a relu then another linear as output layer now only one change i will make here is to bring in a batch normalization and we, i will talk about that in a second but let me uh, finish the layer first an end dot linear and that takes um, our original number was picture was 28 by 28 so when you flatten it it will be 28 uh, multi 28 by multiplied by 28 that is 784 and 1000 neurons self next is a batch norm that's a new thing i'm bringing here norm would be nn dot batch norm 1d and it will take the number of neurons uh, actually i have to put this uh, inside a class let's call this class uh, neural network and um, small mistake this will come here all right and uh, self dot batch norm so i'm done with the batch normalization layer and then i'll have the relu layer so self dot hidden layer activation uh these uh, th th these variable of course you can change it according to your whatever you like like self dot hidden layer activation i could definitely name it to whatever i wanted and that would be an n dot relu r e l u and the last output layer would be hidden to output layer self dot hidden to output layer that would be an n dot linear remember our previous function under the sequential model was the last layer was n dot linear which takes 1000 neurons and 10 classes it will remain exactly the same here as well it will take 1000 neurons and 10 classes because we have total 10 classes in the data set all right that is done with the init function and now i also necessarily have to have a forward function uh 
that is these two functions necessary when you are directly building from an end dot module and not doing it from not doing it from an end dot sequential okay d forward tool text self and the x um, and uh, for let uh, let's call it uh, the first layer will be fully connected let's call it fc equal to self dot and here i'll be making use of these variable uh, so the first one will be input to hidden layer and it will take x similarly the next one will be fc let's call it fc0 equal to self dot batch norm again x let's call it fc1 that would be our next is uh, activation layer so self dot um, hidden layer activation and it will take fc0 and the last one will be fc2 um let's call it self that will take my last output layer which is hidden to output layer self dot hidden to output layer and that will take fc1 and finally return from this function return fc2 and fc1 and uh, my so i'm done with the forward function but i'm still using the class of neural network so next i need to uh, take care of the device thing so my model need to be passed to a particular device uh, but i'll be making use of this neural network class network dot two and device definitely has been uh, defined at the top it could be either the gpu or the cpu depending on the compatibility compatible gpu you have in your machine loss function will be my and then dot cross entropy again it's a multi-class problem so that's why i'm using cross entropy loss and optimizer remains uh, the same oh what was that sgd yes so optimizer okay optimizer remains sgd model dot PRMTERs learning rate for our case remains 0 0.01. Uh, all right, and now again, uh, normally the, the most common learning rate is 0 0.001, but here uh, to run that notebook a little bit faster and also to check the effect of a learning rate, I'm taking a higher learning rate. Uh, versus the most common one and that's why i'm keeping it at 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.001 all right now loss function and optimizer are done so now i can return from this class uh, model then oops sorry t u r n model loss function and the optimizer okay that should do well now coming back to the question what is the difference between nn dot module and nn dot sequential so nn dot module which is what i you know, i'm using here but initially in the previous uh, version of the notebook i used nn dot sequential so nn dot uh, nn dot module is the base class for all neural network modules in pytorch so as such nn.sequential is actually a direct subclass of nn.module and uh, when creating a neural network you would usually do uh, usually go about creating a new class and inheriting from nn.module and defining two methods in it that is this underscore underscore in it which is initializer and the forward and that's all you need since pytorch will handle backward pass with autograd so uh, so init function the initializer is where you define your layers and the forward is the interface code where uh, your module where you use your layers 
So let's uh, quickly check a very simple example of uh, an indot module versus an indot sequential so it can be a little bit more clear. So first I am just implementing a very simplified uh, uh, version of an indot module. Here is a code. So uh, there, there are just two layers here. One is an dot linear, and the next one is an dot linear. Another an dot linear. Uh, both are fully connected. And uh, so this is my initializer, and this is my forward. And now the equivalent code, if I use an dot sequential, would be something like this. Uh, one second. Yep. Yeah. This is just the equivalent code. That's it. So uh, with a sequential, it makes uh, it the code becomes actually more simpler looking. So if the model you are defining is sequential, that is the layers are called iteratively on the input one by one, then you can simply use an n dot sequential because n n dot sequential is a special kind of n n dot module, and uh, the objective of n n dot sequential is to uh, is to is to quickly implement sequential modules such that you are not re required to write the forward definitions it being implicitly known because the layers are sequentially called on the outputs and that's the main benefit of sequential otherwise um, uh, otherwise for this purpose in this notebook there was no reason to uh, bring in an n dot module because anyway i'm building a sequential sequential model here but just to show the example of these uh, and just to, to do us a, a little bit of variation uh, i just implemented this way and then i also have to define a loss function for calculating the loss on the test or validation set uh, because note that we are calculating uh, this loss on the validation set uh, separately because the loss on the training set is getting calculated while training the model but for the validation i have to define it separately so let's define it and starting with uh, torch dot no grad and once again these uh, torch dot no grad impacts the auto grad engine and deactivates it it will reduce the memory usage and speed up computations, but you won't be able to back do back propagation, which you really don't want during your evaluation stage. So torch.nograd basically skips a gradient calculation over the weight. That means you are not changing any weight in the specified layers. Uh, and that's what you are supposed to do, do uh, supposed to do during the evaluation stage. So let's define the function test loss x y and i need the model and uh, predictions would be model to model i have to supply x and then zero i'll come to this uh, why i'm using the zeroth element from the prediction in a second uh, test loss would be i have to uh, move through the last function uh, sorry if n and to it i have to pass both the prediction and the ground truth prediction and y and uh, from this i have to return just a loss test loss dot item oh uh, why it is oh read you or n Okay, uh, all right, that looks good. And on the point on why I'm using this, uh, uh, this particular thing here, that is I'm getting the 0th element from the model prediction is because now my run model function uh, actually returns two outputs. Uh, so I need to modify the uh, test loss accordingly, which uh, makes a prediction by passing input through the model here i will be fetching only the output layer value and not the hidden layer values and uh, the zeroth element makes that possible that is with the zeroth element i'm getting only the output layer value uh, in here and exactly for the same reason that is uh, 
uh, from the prediction to get only the output layer value i have to modify this function as well uh, that is trainer each batch so here also i have a prediction equal to model x and from this prediction i just want to get the zero the 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 output layer value and not the hidden layer value and the output layer value is available at the 0th index and hence this modification is needed and i also need to check where else i am making use of this kind of uh, prediction from the model i think that would be my accuracy function uh, yes so here also i'm getting the for calculating the accuracy i need to get the prediction and previously i was just using prediction equal to model x but here now that i have two output one hidden and one uh, from the output layer i need to just extract or fetch the output layer value with the zero all right i think that pretty much uh, about this modification and now i need to modify my um these last uh, cell here where i'm running actually all the batches all the epochs and uh, here till now i was um, i was calculating the loss for the training set only loss and accuracy for the training set but now i need to include the loss and accuracy for the test set as well so the very first thing i have to do is uh, this current loss and accuracies array that i have they are actually train losses and train accuracies so make them accordingly this will be my train losses and train losses and also train accuracies all right and now i am going to have a test losses and test accuracies i'm just creating two empty arrays which will be holding the losses of the epochs and the accuracies of the epochs and now the first um, so i'm now iterating through the epochs uh, only five epochs here and uh, so first i am iterating to calculate the train losses here and um, create batches for training data okay and then i am also iterating to calculate my train accuracies in this next loop and uh, noting again that these whole codes come from the previous video where i built the basic neural network with pytorch um all right now okay so my train losses and train accuracies are finally here so now after these two loop i have to make the same two loops for my test losses and test accuracies all right so let's do that and uh, just commenting out clearly here that um here i'll be calculating the loss value and the accuracy within the one batch of test data and also the batch size of the test data is equal to the length of the entire test data so it's just basically a single batch of batch of test data to cover for the entire test data set all right for ix batch in enumerate over my test data loader And why I'm getting test data loader is not defined. Did I not define it? Uh, ah, yes. Uh, the load data function, I modified it to return me. Uh, go back to the load data function. Where is that? Where is that? Yeah. So this load data function will actually return me the data loader for both train loaded data and test loaded data. But when I implemented that i did not return that one here so when i in when i executed the load data function it also will return me the test loaded data uh, now because i have the test data as well under the load data function all right and the same low test loaded data is what i will be iterating through over here x and y are my batch and just like uh, previous uh, uh, previous methods i will be checking if the test is accurate 
when the accuracy function uh, q function will return me x y and it will also take the model test update the test epoch loss which is actually called to test loss and that will be x y model remember we defined this test loss as a separate function previously and that's what i'm invoking here test epoch loss is done so now because for the test it's just a single batch so unlike the trains i separately do not have to calculate the mean of all the batch losses so under the under the training i calculated the np dot mean uh, for my losses as well as for accuracy because uh, there it was many many batches because each batch was containing 32 number of images but for test data set it's all single batch so i do not need to get the mean of that uh, all right now uh okay that loop is over so finally i am going to update test epoch loss equal to np dot mean test is correct and uh, noting here again that the uh, test loss here was calculated with these uh, separate function called test loss that I uh, coded in a uh, cell previously but for the train loss that was coming from my uh, this function uh, trainer each batch so this was the function that was returning the training losses uh, so uh, in this when I was uh, looping or iterating through the training data loader uh, that's how I was calculating the train losses uh, and then I was taking the mean of that uh, so th that is slightly different for the test losses because the test loss I have a separate function and that that function I was passing the whole training the test data set uh, in a single batch all right now my test epoch loss is calculated and uh, 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 test okay uh, looks like I miss uh, misspelled it. It should not be test epoch loss. It is accuracy actually because I'm uh, I'm getting it from the uh, test is correct uh, test is correct variable and that is the result of the accuracy function test epoch accuracies. Okay, now I just need to update the arrays by appending these. Uh, numbers to them so update okay my train losses are already train losses train accuracies are already updated so now i just need to update my test losses and test accuracies test hello test losses dot app append and i'll be passing test epoch loss to it test epoch loss and similarly test accuracies dot happened and i will be passing test epoch accuracy this variable just holds all the uh, all the individual losses and individual uh, accuracies for each of the epochs so that i can uh, plot all these number together all for all the epochs together and see how these numbers are improved when the epochs are uh, when when i iterate through all the epochs from one to five to ten to hundred and so on test accuracy all right that should do now that is uh, that is all for the these uh, cell where i am running through the epoch and now the last step that is uh, pending that need to be modified over the previous notebook is the plotting because now i'll be plotting both my uh, training and validation loss and accuracy so i will have two plots one plot will show me training and validation loss uh, versus epochs and the second plot will show me training and validation accuracy 
uh, versus epoch so let's do that first i'm just importing uh, the mtk uh, mtk and uh, this is already imported earlier mtk and mtk i'll be needing that for applying uh, multiple locator module of mtk so yeah plot dot subplot let's see if i can just modify this here this line epochs is okay plot dot figure is okay plot dot slot plot okay let's um okay keep it at one to one and um, yeah plot dot elt dot plot here epochs uh one second uh, i think i can modify this function plt dot plot epoch losses okay uh let's just let's just uh, let's just remove all this plt dot plot epochs and then the first i'm doing train and test losses against epochs train underscore losses let's give it a color of blue label would be equal to training losses similarly i have to do for test losses give it a color of red label test so that go there goes my epochs versus <coughs> train and test losses then uh put pltgca to that x x x axis dot set x x axis dot set major locator mtnck er dot multi multiple locator multiple locator and that would be one uh let's give it a title plt dot training epochs X label would be epochs and y level would be loss losses legend plt dot grid should be off and plt dot show next one is plt dot subplot uh give it uh one two two here i can just copy and that thing and then change accordingly so here it will be epochs versus um, train accuracies train accuracy and this will be train test accuracies otherwise remains uh, Label based C U R S I E S. X axis major tick one. Um, uh, training and test accuracies versus epochs. Accuracies. Accuracies of of show. All right, that should do. Now I'm ready to run the entire notebook. And after I started the training, I got an error under this cell. That is when I came to these uh, uh, running the epochs for epoch in range five. And the error is that I got running mean should contain 784 elements, not 1000. And I figured out that uh, the error came from a little mistake that I made in my uh, this function. Where is that? Where is my model function here? Uh, right. 
so here i made a little mistake in assigning this variable these forward function which will give me the output layer value here the first one i defined the variable to be fc but this fc is completely unnecessary here actually uh, the input parameter to forward function is x this x tensor that itself need to be reassigned to this value so this line should be x equal to self dot input to hidden layer x so uh, just to understand what this is doing is in the very first line under the initialization initialization that is a init function when i define the first line that is self dot input to hidden layer equal to nn dot linear 784 1000 what this line is doing is that it creates a module for a linear transformation with 784 inputs and 1000 outputs and assigns it to the self dot input to hidden layer variable the this module automatically creates a weights and bias tensor which uh, you will use in the forward function and the forward function uh, this this variable the way it works is that in the whole thing that i defined the neural network class that is this neural network class which returns the output layer value fc2 and the hidden layers activation value fc1 that that's what we were talking about earlier that why i needed to do uh, whenever i was calculating predictions from my model i had two values and that's why i i had to get the zeroth value zeroth value actually gives me gives me the the output layers value so uh, uh, and uh, in the forward function the input tensor x is passed through each operation that means uh, here the input tensor x goes through the hidden layer then a patch normalization layer then a hidden layer activation that is this line and finally the output layer that is this line it doesn't matter what you name the variables here that is uh, these uh, whenever i'm i'm defining this variable that hidden layer activation or hidden layer hidden to output layer it really doesn't matter what you name the variable as long as the inputs and outputs of the operations match the network architecture you want to build the order in which you define things in the init method doesn't matter but you will need to sequence operations correctly in the forward method all right now that i made this correction of reassigning this value of x here properly let's run the notebook again from here and let's see if it runs well let's go down yeah looks like now the training has started yes the training had started let's uh, i think for five epochs it may take just a couple of minutes all right my training just got over and uh, now i'm going to see the output of my plot functions okay looks uh, pretty much expected so from the plotting i can see that uh, uh, this is the loss versus epochs and the red line is for test losses and the blue line is for training losses and both are reducing with the increasing number of epochs and now look, uh, look at the interesting plot here the um the the epochs versus accuracies so here the blue line again is training red line for test accuracies and i just ran only five epochs remember so my test accuracy right now it's showing something like uh, a little more than 88 percent and train accuracy is of course much higher at uh, 91 percent or more than that but i ran only for five epochs so if i run for like 100 epochs definitely this test will go uh, beyond 92 actually i'm going to run that and show you the result so yeah so now it looks uh, all right and now after the training is done i have to uh, do the last step which is uh, plotting parameter distribution across layers and that pretty much will be the last step for this notebook so there are uh, uh, there are four parameter groups in our model let me quickly get those one second oh sorry this is a code cell So there are four parameters groups in our model. These are weights in the uh, layer connecting the input layer to the hidden layer, then bias in the hidden layer 
Number three is weights in the layer connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. And finally, bias in the output layer. So now what I'm going to do, uh, I'll take a look at the distribution of each of these parameter by uh, doing a plot. And uh, okay, let me first write the code for the plot and then I'll explain what I'm doing here for index uh, and bar in Let's enumerate over model the parameters. Uh, parameters. And if index is zero, so I, ha I will have four uh, index to iterate over starting from zero to three, zero, one, two, three. Index to zero. I'll be plotting on histogram. So plt dot hist and then parameter dot uh, CPU. I'll explain what uh, I'm doing here with CPU dot detach in a second dot numpy and also I need to flatten it. Flatten. All right, then this code needs to be repeated. Uh, no, uh, even I need to uh, plot the title, the uh, distribution weights, let's call it uh, distribution of weights in the in the connecting the input layer, connecting the input layer to the hidden layer. GRM. Uh, or here, uh, parameters, or you can also say weights. Uh, these are actually weights. So the parameter histogram for weights. For connecting the input layers to the parameters, and then plt dot show. And this kind of code need to be repeated four times for the four parameters. and then change the index uh, histogram for weights. Now the uh, bias in the hidden layer. So that's my next weights. And then the third weight will be weights in the layer connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. Connecting the hidden layer to the output layer. Actually the second one will just be histogram for bias in the hidden layer and the fourth layer is bias in the output layer histogram and the other changes I have to make zero one two uh three let's run this cell uh enumerate of course Spelling mistake and new M E R I T E. All right, now I just ran the cell, and this pretty much is the distribution of uh, the parameters or the weights. This is the histogram, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, the kind of histogram, uh, the kind of weight distribution you get after running a very simple uh neural network now quickly quickly uh, uh learned uh, what is the cpu and detach and numpy and flatten is doing so first on my uh, each parameter that is each weight i'm using uh these i'm i'm using an explicit dot cpu method here so uh, if you go to their official documentation of dot cpu what they they will do is the tensor dot cpu returns a copy of this object in cpu memory if the object is already in CPU memory and on the correct device, then no copy is performed and the original object is returned. Okay, so that's what it done. It is doing pretty much. And why why I am explicitly requiring it is because that CPU tensors and the converted NumPy arrays share memory. 
So if a dot CPU is not explicitly called like this, then it is implicitly done. And in that case, that is, if it is implicitly done, then the operation will be different depending on whether you are, your tensor is on CUDA or your tensor is on CPU tensor. But I do not that do not want that kind of um, uh, confusing situation. And so it's normal practice uh, normally that uh, we wanted to be explicit about um, calling dot cpu when it is really required and uh, remember again the dot cpu will do nothing at all if your tensor is already on the cpu and otherwise it will create a new tensor uh, of on on this original tensor that is my original tensor here was par all right and then i'm using this detach method it's a very important and very useful method and what so quickly go over there uh, official documentation in pytorch for so uh, this is torch.tensor.detach. What it does is returns a new tensor detached from the current graph. The result will never require gradient. This is the most important point. It will never require gradient. And this method also affects forward mode AD gradients and the result will never have forward mode AD gradients. So that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, the main main uh, working of detach that it, it it is detaching the gradient calculation so uh, it deta it uh, the detach method disables automatic differentiation that is stops keeping track of gradients because as you know pytorch keeps track of all operations that involve tensors and these operations are tracked or recorded as a directed graph or computational graph but here I am converting that tensor to a numpy with this uh, with this method dot numpy. So numpy dot object does not have that extra layer that is the computational graph part, and therefore when converting a torch tensor to numpy ND array, you must explicitly remove the computational graph of the tensor using the detach command. So basically with detach it creates a new view such that that these operations are no more tracked that is a gradient is no longer being computed and subgraph is not going to be recorded hence memory is not utilized for that part of the operation so very helpful while while you are working with large data set and you don't really require the gradient here so here i'm just plotting it uh, with the simple numbers i do not need those gradient calculation and keeping track of the computational graph so that's pretty much how detach work and if you uh, if you really want to learn more about detach there's a beautiful stack overflow uh, 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 thread here they explain it so uh, in detail so the question or of the original question they are asked is why do we call detach before calling dot numpy on a pytorch tensor uh, in stack overflow and the first accepted answer of that explains it very in very detail and so beautifully that uh, uh, torch.tensor are designed to be used in the context of gradient descent optimization and therefore they hold not only a tensor with numeric values but more importantly the computational graph leading to these values these computational graph is then used using the chain rule of derivatives to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to each of the independent variables used to compute the loss and as mentioned before np.ndarray object does not have this extra computational graph layer therefore when converting torch.tensor you need to uh, you need to apply detach and uh, he also gives a great example that um, uh, actually calculates uh, uh, gradient with the backward function and what happens when we uh, take out the detach method from it yeah you can definitely go through it uh, all right now coming back to our code that pretty much um, that pretty much uh, for this notebook I guess that pretty much wraps up this video stay tuned my next few videos will all be on OpenCV image processing and computer vision so if you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe. And if you have liked this video, smash the like button. See you in the next video.